Good morning and welcome to another CAN Diagnostic video. In today's riveting episode, it's just going to be a very quick um, SMD, well MC, MCU uh, chip replacement video. Just some quick tips on how to get this type of chip done. Um, this particular MCU has got 144 legs on it, which sounds a lot, but compared to some, it's only a small one. To others, it's massive. Um, so I'm just going to get straight into it and try not to get in the way too much. This is one that I've already I've already fixed this. This is basically a CAS 3 unit out of a mini this is. Um, this is the old unit. It's got some damage over here and under the under the relay. So what I did was I got another unit and swapped. This is the this is the MCU off the new unit so obviously the original chip from here that has got all the immobilizer details that's got all the key information etc i've taken off this board and put it on the new one already so this is basically just a parts board so i put this chip on here basically just for purposes of this video so it's going to come off easier than what it normally would but the principles are the same First of all, we're going to put some flux on it. I'm going to get the hot air. Then I'm going to get the tweezers. It's basically going to sit in this flat in between the legs on the corner. And I'm not going to be putting any pressure on it, really. It's basically just going to be sitting underneath it. So when it eventually does lift, it's just going to nice and easily lift off the board. Do so it just gently. Gonna go around the MCU. Now temperature wise doesn't really matter. Typically I always have it on the hottest temperature and if I want it to be a bit cooler then I'll just lift the iron further away. So I'm gonna go around in a circular fashion. Getting the solder nice and warm. There we go, chips move, so I'm going to keep the hot air flowing just in case it sticks in any unwanted places. Take the hot air away. And here is our MCU. And normally I'd have the fan running so you're not breathing any of this tack in, but it's a bit noisy. So I'm just going to put that down for now and get the old iron out. It's still got some flux on the board. So we're gonna not, not gonna bother putting any fresh stuff down. And I'm basically with the clean iron, where are we on the camera? With the clean iron, I'm just gonna follow the lines of the legs. So I'm not gonna go across the legs like this, because you've got more chance of ripping the leg up, well the pad up and joining it across with the next pad. So I'm just very gently in a downwards motion following the, the pads. I'm going to come down and take all the excess solder off. Periodically cleaning my iron to take all the solder off it. And basically just brushing the solder away. Clean the iron, do the third set. You don't want to be putting any pressure on these pads. We are very, very gently gliding over the pads. These pads are extremely delicate. This is why on this particular board, I am not using wick because I'm more than likely to wick a leg up and that would not be clever. So now we need to get rid of this old flux, okay? Um, if you get the old coal and you spray it straight on, with the board being so hot, it is likely that you may crack the board. Um, there'd be too much thermal shock going through it. So what I'm gonna do is essentially 
spray away from the board over here where it's a lot cooler and I'm just going to let the the alcohol flow down and I'm going to clean it as it flows down there'll be more residue on this board than usual because obviously this chip's already been on and off twice gonna wipe the excess up You really should have your fan, the extractor going while doing any soldering, particularly when you're using flux. Like I say, I'm an hard fucker, so. Right. Now, some people may put solder back on these, fresh solder, um, and then put the chip back on top and let it sink into. The new solder that's one way of doing it and there's nothing particularly wrong with it it can just sometimes make it difficult for the chip to sit down um, flush all the way it may be sticking up here where it's not sunk through the solder enough but it might be fully flush here um, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to put a bit more flux on some fresh flux not a lot you don't need a lot the old chip back now I'm just going to spray this chip give it a quick clean being extremely careful not to bend my legs but you don't need me to tell you how fragile they are So now I know the orientation of the chip, obviously I've taken it off twice, but there's a little dot in the corner and that corresponds with something on the board, it's usually a dot on the board. So I'm just going to drop that in place. Now this is the tricky bit, so what I'm probably going to end up doing, if I can do it by eye then I'll do it by eye. If not, I'll get the camera out. All it takes is patience. Unfortunately, that's something I'm lacking in life. Okay, so finally got it in line. Now all I'm gonna do is hit it with the hot air. No, it doesn't move too much. So I'm gonna have the hot air. The speed is gonna be very low. So it's not pushing any air onto the board as such with any force. Again, same thing, gonna go to a nice circular motion. Now in relation to placing the chip, if you concentrate on one corner, like 190 degree angle, 
if you get the two sides in line then typically the rest will line up not always the case but most of the time it can be very frustrating Just pull itself perfectly in line. So what I'm what I typically do now is I'm just gonna let it cool a sec. Okay, now this might not be the best way, but it's the way I do it, and it works. Not for long, just let it cool a little bit. Then I'm gonna push hard in the middle of it. Right, so I'm going to let it cool down. Obviously we're trying to minimise the amount of time we're on the board with the heat. So you know, to a lot of people that, that's fine and what they'll then do is they'll go around on the camera and they'll just be putting a pin in between every single leg and checking it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the soldering iron over the top of it just to make sure that every leg is down and with and soldered properly and then I'll get the camera on it and then the laborious job of checking every single pin. There's some people who do it on day to day, do it all day every day, they might not feel the need to check every pin but I'm showing you how, exactly how I do it and say so this job, this is the scrap board, the finished product has already been shipped out and worked straight away. Now I knew it was going to work straight away because I checked every single pin about seven times. Constantly go around the board, check each pin. It's very laborious, but if they, if the customer rings me up and say it didn't work, then I know it's not down to me being negligent and not soldering the board down properly. Right, so I'm on the way. Put the soldering iron to heat up. A very very small bit of solder just enough for it to smoke and I'm going to press down on the tip of the pad and I'm going to roll that iron across each leg So I'm going to do this for all of it. And then how I check it, obviously I'm not going to be doing this with every single pin and I'm not going to be soldering anymore. This is purely to show you how I do it. We're getting an X-Acto knife. Okay, and I'm just literally going between every pin, give it a slight twist, give it a bit of a rock. If those legs are going to move, you will see them flexing ever so slightly. And then, if it does flex, just take your iron, dab a bit of solder on it, push it into the respective pins. If it's cool, check again. No flex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of the final product, and tack it onto the end of this video, just to see what. When you're taking your time and you're doing it, you're doing it for a customer, you're doing it properly, and you're not doing it as a brief demonstration like this is. And you see how the how the final product should look. It should look like factory, and I'm going to show you. 
how it looks when I've finished with it. Um, factory, maybe not factory, but it's pretty damn close. And then once you've, once you've soldered it and you're happy with every single pin and you've double checked it and triple checked it, wait for the ball to cool off so it's nice and cool and then you can spray it and start cleaning. Make sure there's no excess flux on the board because flux can be corrosive if it's left for too long. Okay, so I hope this helps somebody. So until next time, ta-da.